if we're to look not even just this season, but long term, right? Like what, what kind of outlooks do you guys have for both of them as prospects? And is there maybe an NHL comparable player that you see their skill set resembling? I'll start with what Shane Pinto's coach said about him on TSN 1200 a while ago. And that's that he sees a lot of Mark Shifley in his game, the responsible two way guy. I know Shifley's offensive numbers, they're up and then down, right? Like he's not consistently 70, 80 points, but when he has a flash or when he has a winger who can push the pace as well, like when line had 40 points. Yeah. I think Shifley was up at a point a game that year too, but he's the responsible defensively. So, I mean, that's a pretty high level comparable. If you're looking at more of a midterm guy, there's nothing that's coming across the top of my head now, but in terms of a name, but just a, a third line, win your face-offs, kill penalties and be able to spot duty on the power play. So for him, it's it's more of a, a matter of be reliable first. And if the offense comes, it's a bonus. Whereas for JBD, you're not looking for offense at all. You're looking for a steady presence who, much like Artem Zub, makes his partner better. Now, Ottawa had the king of that in Mark Mathot, just allowing Carlson to do his thing. I see a lot of similar, similar traits in JBD. He can step up and make a big hit if he has to, but he's got a really active stick and he's strong uh, defensively. So, uh, again, I, I'm having trouble putting a name on it right now. Maybe Pil- as Pilsy gives his two cents, I'll think of it more. But just your prototypical shutdown defenseman who can make his partner have more freedom offensively. Yeah, and uh, if if we're talking about a comparable for the prospect, uh, I was talking about Eric Branstrom, who is just on the edge of being called a prospect. I'm going to use uh, Ross's player comparable because I think it's a good one. How about Mark Strait? That's a guy who he was a smaller left shot defenseman, 5'11", and he put up some massive points in Montreal. Like I'm looking at his stats right now, 62 points. And then when he went to the Islanders, 56, 49, 47. So he had some really good years there. And I can see Brandstrom, if he can fit and find a coach that – can really utilize him properly. I can see him hitting somewhere in those point totals. Like he has the ability to move the puck up ice. And especially if he gets time as the quarterback of the second power play unit, I don't see why we can't uh, have an Eric Branstrom that can put up at least similar numbers and play a similar style to Mark Streit. No. And Ross, you were saying with Pinto there, more of a third line, win your face offs, kill penalties, do all those little things there. So for those that are listening and are maybe on the North Dakota hype train right now and are thinking he's going to be the second coming of Jason Spezza, more, more <laughs> so temper that towards more of like a Chris Kelly's type role you can see him playing. At oh, the that, level that's or- that's a nice comparable. I think he's got more offensive touch and you, you see it, especially on his power play. He stands in the Ovechkin spot. He's got a great one-timer. And I think his his hockey sense, like Chris Kelly, his hockey sense is elite. I think there's just a little more there in terms of hands and in terms of speed. I think uh, Chris Kelly's a really smart player. I was going to say like a, a prime Brandon Sutter. And I know that he got uh, paid in Vancouver and now he's maybe at, at the back nine of his career. But when he was up and coming and, and he was a really good player. So I think like maybe that's the low end and the high end is Mark Shifley. I mean, he, he is going to produce, though. I've, I've convinced. And maybe I was doing a bit of trolling when I mentioned his comparison to Cole Caulfield and saying he's going to be a better NHL player, more reliable. Um, I'm ready to eat that, but I'm also half-heartedly believing it because I think that he's going to bring so many different elements to his game. A lot of time left in that argument, too. Lots of time. And that's why I, I kind of smiled when you said, Kyle, later this week in Montreal, maybe a debut because – Cole Caulfield can't crack that Habs roster. It's stuck up with all-stars, like guess, Perry Cock and the NBA Pilsy. But uh, no, it, it's all in good fun. Everything to chirp Habs fans is, is A-OK with me. Uh, but yeah, maybe temper the expectations a bit, at least initially with Shane Pinto. But the opposite could have been said for Josh Norris, right, guys? Like you would have said, hey, guys, he's going to be a second, third, or third, maybe second line center. And now I'm saying this guy's going to be a fixture in the top six going for different players josh norris much more of a shooter but the the reliability and the two-way play you're going to get from shane pinto well let's let's remember he when he was 15 he was just playing triple a wasn't really on the scene he's only been playing competitive hockey for less than seven years so for me that's a, a guy who the sky's the limit as his growth continues 